Let's talk about ears. Ear is organ of hearing, in mammals also of balance. Ear is usually built of three parts, outer ear, which contains auricle or pinna and ear canal, middle ear, which includes the tympanic cavity and three ossicles, malus, incus and stapes, which transfers sounds to the inner ear, which sits in the bone labyrinth, structure mainly responsible for hearing and balance. Since the only visible part of the ear is outer ear, word ear mostly refers to the auricle, which is by the way the most diverse part of the ear. In many species of mammals, size and shape of auricle varies depends on where animals live. For example, polar fox has got smaller ears than his European cousin. In monster high dolls, we have got various phenotypes of ears. When I was doing a comparison of my dolls' ears for this video, I realized how diverse they are. For example, human-like Frankie ears are different from this which Rebecca has. Also, Gigi and Gina Fire has got a different type of pointy ears as Draculaura and Gulia Yelps. We have got also fishy Laguna ears and even fully earless dolls like Gil. Another huge group of dolls are these with animalistic ears like Claudine Wolf. The huge problem of doll customizers is that factory ears usually don't match characters which we want to create. What to do then? You can sculpt them de novo like doll motion, or make them fancy like Enchanterium, or reshape existing ears like Delightful, or make ear transplantation like Pop and Atelier, or hide earless part with hair and pretend that everything is fine, like me. Let's be honest, each of these methods has got cons and pros. Recently I thought about a different approach. Maybe it would be possible to make a mold of doll ears and make custom ears out of molds. For this I bought this two-part silicone mold maker. I was inspired by Hexian who is using this kind of material many times for doll accessories. I don't know whether this is exact brand which he used, but the idea is the same. You are mixing equal part of A and B put and put it on the thing from which you want to have your mold. Piece of cake. What worries me is when I read the instructions, producer do not recommend using it on vinyl. And doll heads are well vinyl. So let's make an experiment. I have got here this Draculaura Spectra hybrid, which is left over from my failure project. Yeah, that one. I pick up her because she is already bald and clean. So to check whether my silicone mold maker will cure on her vinyl head, I'll put it directly on one of her ears. Her second ear I'll cover with my Duraclear Ultra Matte Varnish to see if it helps with something. These will be my two experimental probes. My negative control, which should not cure, will be this vinyl duct tape. And my positive control, which will cure, will be this plastic Eppendorf tube. It has got molded scale on the sides, so we'll see how it's with picking details. So, to conclude, our experiment has got four samples. Negative and positive controls, which show us how uncured and cured silicone behaves, plus two probes, one non-treated vinyl and one protected with Duraclear Ultra Matte Varnish. I am taking some of the part A and part B to have enough for all four samples, mixing it to get solid color and I am applying it to the probes and controls. I was working fast because I had only 20 minutes, but now I can say that this is more than enough for this kind of work. So when you'll be trying doing this on your own, try to be as accurate as possible to get all of details without air bubbles. According to the instructions, curing time is one hour, but I left it overnight. Tomorrow. Let's see what we have first. Our positive control gets easily from the table. And now taking the tube. And it's really, really nice. How it, it looks like how it's supposed to look like. And interesting enough is that our negative control is also cured, so this is not that bad. Or this duct tape is not that scary as it's supposed to be. But now our most interesting part. Let's see her ears. Oh, <laughs> so cute! And another. Here it is. So, 
yeah. Um, she's a little sleeky after this uh, party, but uh, it's not the case. I just cleaned up with uh, uh, with soap. But yeah, we have got really really nice uh, molds. And actually, I could say that it is uh, no, definitely no need to uh, put the, uh, any, any varnish, it works without it. And I could say that without varnish it is even clear, clearer, because uh, here I, I think I put it too much and uh, I can see some uh, paint strokes uh, from paintbrush and uh, they are also visible here as well. And yeah, and I think that here I should put it better, but yeah, with this I am really really happy. It looks it looks good. Until I start to cast them, I want to try uh, some more complicated ears, like this lady. She she's I really like this doll. I don't know what who she is. So I need to check it, uh, but I really like her sculpt. She has got really pretty face. And uh, very good, uh, very detailed ears. So if I will be able to get a mold of these ears, we are home. Off camera, I cut her hair, put silicone on her ears, and left her for a few hours to cure. Let's back to Draculaura's ears mold. First, I cut some of the putty from the bottom to make them stay straight. There are many things which you can use to casting these cuties. The most obvious is epoxy clay or resin, but then prepared ears will be hard and it will be more visible that they are not belong to the doll head. That's why I decided to test two materials which gave me more squishy product. I pick up 3D fabric paint and Mod Podge. I have got bigger hopes on Mod Podge because it tries very flexible and it is cheap. So I filled one of the ears with 3D paint and second with Mod Podge. Important is to distribute material to all crevices and remove all air bubbles. After filling, I left them for another hours to cure. I wasn't fully satisfied with the result. For Mod Podge ear I put too much and it wasn't fully dried, even after a few days. In other hand, 3D paint was too clumpy and ears turned out very bubbly, even after many tries on both Draculaura and Posea ear mold. Of course I tried to fill the gaps with paint, but it didn't help. My next try was to put filling in layers. I am not quite sure how much uh, of uh layers I put here could be 10 or something like that. I usually put this at the morning, then I go to work and uh, uh, another another I put on the evening, then I go sleep, you know this stuff. And this just dried. And um, Mod Podge is really cool that it uh, just stays tr uh, makes transparent when it dried. Like nice. And uh, and that's why I was I know when I should put another uh, layer. So I have got these two uh, Passa uh, ears and one uh, um, Draculaura. I have got also somewhere mold with second uh, ear, which I demolded because I was too curious. <laughs> but yeah, let's uh, see it together. So let's start with it. And... Ta-da! It looks oh, it looks really really cool. Of course, there is still some air bubbles near to uh, the corner of the ears, but actually I can buy it. It is really really okay uh, compared to what we have with uh, uh, with 3D paint. It's so actually no comparison. This is uh, transparent, so it's hard to see. But uh, trust me, it looks better. And of course. This ear can be trimmed from this access glue. Here is ear which I demolded off camera. So yeah, this one is a little more pointy pointy, but they are both very okay. They are quite thick. Dark. Oh. Yeah, here you will see more on the dark background. But yeah, they are quite thick. And they look like so. 
Yeah. Don't run. So this is very very promising. Yeah, this one I cut a little too much, but yeah, this is uh, th this is really good, and uh, we'll see how it's uh, how this posa more complicated ears will go. So maybe this is the case. Oh, the molding, as you see, is very easy, and oh, guys, it looks really really good. I need to look it uh, next to my eyes, so sorry, <laughs> not, not, not on camera, but yeah, I can see that... Uh, mm, okay, now they're on this dark background. Uh, there is not that much of the air bubbles. Um, of course, when it will be painted uh, with, uh, uh, with paint, uh, it will be more visible, but yeah, this old whole sculpt from this ear, it's here. So, yeah, and it looks like it is uh, cured fully, even if it's a little, uh, a little white, it's just uh, by the layers, but yeah, mm, uh, this uh, uh, paint, this glue goes to the each crevices on the, t on the down of the mold, and yeah, we have got all this complicated mold, so, sculpt, so really, really cool, and another one. as pretty as this. I think that even more pretty because this one, little lost here, it has got little bubble, bubble here and this one doesn't have this bubble. But still, this is just technique. And yeah, so Mod Podge, silicon mold and you have got your own ears compared to mommy. Pretty, pretty decent. Okay, but the most important thing is, does this pretty ears will be functional? I will, uh, whether I will be able to put the, put them on the monster high doll or not. So, this will go. Okay, so here I have got Sadi. Say hello. Hello. And. Uh, yeah, Sally um, was made from uh, Meow Said the Skink doll. A bit more light, you will see her better. Oh, yes. Sally was made by Meow Said the Skink doll. Uh, I will left. Uh, I will put a link to her video here in the cards. And uh, uh, the point is that she has got her mouse ears, as Mio said this, and, but she doesn't have got human ears, which I cover with her hair, just to not be that <laughs> visible. So let's try to put these uh, Draculaura ears. I need to remove her earrings. And this week... Oops! Yeah, she had got her neck issues. <laughs> Don't lose your head, send on Bolain. Let's take this neck back. One sec. Ah, oh, later. Later, okay. So, yeah. There she is, all old. So here you see how I am gluing these ears. Pretty straightforward. Uh, what? Did I just put pencil in her neck where neck packs took? I forgot about it, it was 3 minutes ago. <laughs> Anyway, I left her in this state for a few days. So, here 
we are a few days later with her ears and it looks really good. They are sealed. They fit here, so let's take this. Yeah, this, uh, of course, she have got uh, a hole after pin, but this can be uh, uh, cured with glue. But yeah, they are fitting here, they are flexible as her head. So yeah, it looks okay. I already prepared paint for uh, matching with her skin tone. So yeah, you can paint these ears too match with her. Of course there is some discoloration that uh, next time when I will be doing something like this I will be putting ears before blushing and everything so then the uh, whole color would be would uh, could be better uh, match it with pastels and uh, all of this stuff. Here it is. This bold meal said her head. Yes, she was bold. She was earless. And now she has got ears. I am really, really happy with it. And yeah, now I need to prepare a new wig for her. I will not redo this wig for the fifth time, no way. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope that this tutorial will will help you solve your ears problem. I am sure that I will be using it more often and uh, I will update you about my success. And if you use it, please let, please let me know in the comments or in my Instagram. I am really curious of your of your works. So, see you in next video. Bye.